All right, episode two. I'm sorry to keep you guys waiting on this video. A lot has been going on in my life, and now I'm back at it. So here we go. We are going to make the PCB of the Marshall Blues Breaker. So here we go. We're going to open up Easy EDA again. And I just want to point out that I did have one error on the original schematic, and that's this um, capacitor right here. It was, I think, 100 nanofarad. And it needs to be 220 nanofarad to be true to the original. So what we're going to do is at this point, we're feeling pretty good about the schematic. So now we're going to convert schematic to PCB. And what this is going to do, you've seen me do this a few times. Um, what this is going to do is basically give us the foundation for connecting all of our um, components together and kind of organize it. What size do we want? things like that. So as far as the, the sizing of the circuit board, you kind of have to make a decision now. It's like, what size um, enclosure are we going to use? And to get a good idea of what compatible enclosure size, you know, you can simply go on to any of my favorite um, uh, examples of pedals or circuit boards, sorry, PCBs, kind of a brain crunch here. Oh, these are new ones. So they're probably not going to have um, sizing in it. But let's see here. Featured. Let's Hopefully it's something that's been around for a while. So it has all the information and in the build documentation. So you see here that there is some design parameters. We see 1.95 inches wide by 1.95 inches tall. So we can definitely do that. Um, I also like to round out these corners. And if you really see my other examples of circuit boards, um, I don't know if it's going to be able to click off of that. But I'm basically going to copy and paste, and I'll give you that same dimensions um, for the board outline. So that's basically what this whole board outline is, just for fun. Let's see. You do have to do some math if you're using like easy EDA. So we'll just simply do 1.59 inches to millimeters. And then we get roughly, what's that, 49.5. So let's just do 49.5. And then the height is 49.5. And here's a choice. So you can do a super crazy um, four layer if you want that does add the costs to the circuit board manufacturing. Or you can just do one layer if you really want to get crazy with a single um layer but it looks like that's not supported um at least in the basic version of easy eda but i think we'll be safe with two layers <clears throat> and that should be good if you go down to one layer the one big issue with one layer is that your solder joints don't have like the through holes all the way through to the other side of the solder um layer basically the top layer to the bottom layer and your joints are, especially if you do any like rework, you can lift a pad really easily. So we don't want to do that. Um, and oh, I have never seen these circular round rectangular. I'm kind of curious what that looks like. Um, let's hit apply and oh, cool. So it does the round, the rounding for you. Um, I have not seen that before uh, it's going to definitely make things a lot easier for those who want to use that i have my own personal preference which is the one the size that i've always used for my circuit boards it just kind of feels consistent so when you have you know a circuit board from me they look the same so what i'm doing right now is just holding uh control and you can do this too once you start building your own library of circuit board stuff. You hold control and you click around and that kind of gives you your board outline. So now I'm just going to copy and you can copy and paste between stuff and it's okay to layer on top. So now we have my exact board outline, which is a little bit bigger. Um, and there might be, you know, for manufacturing costs, this does add weight to your circuit board order, so that's something to consider. But I think um, I'm gonna stick with my personal format, just 
curious what radius I used. 2.032. That seems like some sort of mil to millimeter conversion error. Um, you know, some rounding, some math. So that's interesting. I like to have the ground and the 9 volt DC or whatever in the diode, the protection diode, right up at the very top so it's not taking up any real estate. That's just kind of my own signature, I guess. Or just something I prefer, just to get those out of the way. Otherwise, you're kind of clashing, and you can sort of see it in the pedal PCB. Here we go. Where you got everything kind of all together in a row. Um, this is definitely cheaper from a manufacturing standpoint. So just some things to keep in mind. Again, I'm just going to start with my board outline. At this point, we kind of also have to decide if you want sort of these designations of C3, C4, um, or do you want the actual name of the component or the, the you know, the name of the component or the value of that component. Obviously, it's going to be hard to put both in, so you might need to take a, you know, make a choice here. Um, and you can change the font. So it's a little tedious. I'll show you how to do it. But you do have to just click on just the thing you want to change the font on and then go into your font family and then choose the font that you want. Obviously, you have to move these things around so it all kind of fits. Um, so there's advantages and there's disadvantages in doing it that way. So you can sort of see and play around with what might work best. Um, sometimes I don't even include the C3, but what I will do is take a snapshot of the wire run afterwards, and I can show you how to do that uh, when we get to that point. But you'll see like the actual connections um, sort of in an X-ray format take a picture of that and you can send it out to your customers or you can keep that in your photo album. So that way your PCBs always look really pristine. Um, so I'm going to do that. Whoops. Cause I'm basically going to leave the name and eliminate the prefix. And I'm going to just stick with, um, the, um, you know, using the X-ray in a photo album. So you can sort of, sort of see all the outlines and such. I don't think I have a good example of that here, but okay. So now the easiest thing to do actually at this point is to select, you know, not every component, but for the ones you want to remove the prefix and then enable the name, you, you kind of want to start going through this because afterwards when it's all populated it can be a pain in the butt. Um, I might need, see it says diode kit, so I think I gotta change that component. So it doesn't say diode kit, it should actually be 1N4001, I believe. Let's see, 1N4001, yep. All right, so where it says diode kit, okay, here, I'm just gonna say 1N4001. This is actually a good thing for you to see as well. Because if you do have to make any changes, you always go back to the schematic, save, and then you can update the PCB. It will ask you which one. See, it's not listing listed here. It's because we didn't save it yet. Therefore, it does not exist. So I'm going to actually save it now. And it's going to give it sort of a default um, name. And now we can go back to here and then do update PCB. And guess what? There it is. So we're going to hit that nothing's changed replace d5 of course you do want to also have this also update track net just in case this you can design rule leave that alone for now um but you're going to see wherever it went um 4001 okay so now it's updated to actually be for the one n 4001 uh led one i don't think really need led one at all so how about we just change that to no, and then that's just the LED. We'll go and do these. The switches might be confusing. Um, let's see what their names are. Yeah, that's not something we need the names to be precise about. So let's just do yes, and then no on this guy. Again, we're just going and checking things. No, yes. 
So the thing here um, with these capacitors that you, is that we do have one that's um, recommended and not on the original. So the this capacitor C10 is not on the original. Basically, they're implying that your power supply has a capacitor, which is true. Um, this will r eliminate any ripple, in theory, from the 9 volt coming out of your power supply, and maybe something will be introduced into the, the wire from the power supply into your pedal. So that's what that is for. But it's not an original, so you just don't, you can omit it. So we can make a note on the PCB as well. So if there's something like, like that, um, we don't really need to know if it's 50 volt. So I'm going to, again, go back here. Maybe we want to just remove that. We can put in, in your notes for your bomb to say it needs to be, you know, X amount of voltage. So as you can see, this is kind of tedious once, but once you get everything kind of labeled the way, and a lot of times, like, I don't even know if I'm labeling everything the right way until I do this. Another fun thing um, with this design software, it's not really fun. I'm just kind of making this term up is that the um, component, sometimes if you change a lot in the, in here, and then you do update component, this component will actually kind of go back to this default. So you might have this beautiful layout all done. You know, you have all your components inside the, inside your board outline, and then you change something in your schematic, and all of a sudden that component is now way off. So you have to kind of backtrack some things sometimes. Um, another thing that you'll just, you'll learn, you know, again, part of this is learning. Okay, so now there's some components down here. I could probably do a general sort of swipe and then just hit control, hold control on those. Um, you can also, the way I design this is like, see these UC2Xs? You don't necessarily need to populate those with any switches if you don't want. You could just have to have a jumper. But, you know, I'm doing my best to kind of create and give you the opportunity to play around the different versions, if different versions do exist. Um, you know, what those two so would sound like. So maybe that would be a good one to keep the, um, you know, the X in there so you can kind of identify it and know about it. But for now, I'm going to do just kind of like sticking with my usual here. So I'll go, yes, yes, yes. Okay, now this is like more of a me thing. You don't have to do this, but I like to have my um, fonts all matching and not the default because I feel like the default is very functional, but it's ugly as heck. So I'm just going to hold control and literally click all the thing. Can I even, no, you can't even do a all inclusive thing. Okay. So I just found another thing. I think the in and the in, I got to figure out what that means. I must have another in or I copied something. Okay. So that default font might be changed if I update those. Let's see. So one of the things I'm doing now is I'm making sure I didn't select anything else by accident, like the board outline, because as soon as I do that, all of my selections will go away. Um, and then up here, that would become the kind of like something that looks like that. It's like, hey, you selected something that's not all the same. All right, so I'm going to do contracts for everything. That's my personal preference. I, I use that font for all my Tone Geek stuff and just to kind of keep the brand consistent. Um, what's that? C7. I don't know. I think this is like the actual in, but I don't know what this one is. Let's go back to our schematic. So there's in, 9V in. Is this one also just in? In? Oh, in there. 
Okay, so it looks like the let me just make sure I'm recording. Yep, recording. Um, the output is still labeled input, so we gotta obviously change that. So I'm gonna go name out. Then we'll save. We will update the PCB. Hopefully it's the last time. It probably won't be. But you'll see that I think the font might change. Nope. Looks like it's font stayed the same. So this is good to know. Um, you do have to kind of think upside down when it comes to in, ins and outs. Um, and then just overall, like, I know just from repetition that my input is actually on the left. Because you remember, like, this should be upside down. The circuit board will be upside down unless you're intentionally trying to hide all the components underneath and just having, like, this flat PCB, which is kind of cool. But it's not very easy to service the components without having to take the whole thing apart. So I'm also assuming that we're using um, switchcraft jacks or something similar that's not, you know, a PCB mounted jack. So very simply, I'm just going to go ahead and start kind of boxing out um, the components and then we can fine tune things as we go along. And maybe, you know, I, w I won't keep you on camera for all the fine tuning, but that sometimes will take double the time of just placing the components. Um, so I guess if we wanted to, it looks like all of these are nicely aligned. So I can hopefully, it's close. See, that's one thing is like, you see like the 220 NF, you see like the two, the N kind of gets lopped off. So I don't know if I completely like that. Um, but again, it makes kind of like a neat little PCB. If we want to look at what the original does for further inspiration, they just do the prefixes anyway. Um, I like to do the, the numbers because it's less error when you're making these. Again, here's similar components, so I can just copy and paste. Or not copy and paste, but just you know select them like that. Um, you can, if you wanted to, click on the outside of the component and then specifically, well, so I clicked on the, the name, which is the value, hold control and then click on the outside. And then here's a trick. You can actually center in there just like that, but you have to do it on every single, again, you can, <laughs> you could take forever just fine tuning these things. And I encourage you to do that. But I don't think I'm going to do that for, you know, being on camera because that could be a very long video. And as you guess, I'm pretty picky about the aesthetics of these things. Um, yeah, so these are dissimilar parts, so they kind of got all funky. But I will just generally get these together. Oh, this is going to be my biggest move yet. Okay. Ooh, look at that efficiency. That 100 UF fits really nicely in there. 100 UF fits really nicely in there. We'll just go like that. <clears throat> switch two, switch one. All right, so let's get populating here. One thing that you can still do is import just footprints. And what I have found is someone online really made a nice Tata 125B footprint. And it's not 100% perfect. You can see over here, but sometimes you can get really, really lucky. Let me see if I can find a specific one. Oh, come on, where are we? One twenty five B. Where are we? Let me take a look at this and then maybe I'll get some memories. Whoops. That's helpful, but I don't think that's the one that I've used. Maybe it is.
You know what? Maybe it is. You know what? It is. So that's the one I use. So what I'm basically doing is you can see like I'm sort of trying to align the sides here. I can't point and show you at the same time. But you can see like the board outline, how close it is. And we can obviously um, lock stuff down. But actually, let's do that first. So I'm going to take the board outline and lock it so it doesn't get mangled. So I'm just going to select everything, the whole board outline. I'm going to zoom in, make sure, and then right click and then lock. So now that won't get adjusted because each one of these is a separate node. And if you hit something like the organ, you know, basically an organize, um, you know, center, that will really screw things up. So I'm hoping that if we click on that and we click on this and we do center, it will center it up, but it's not doing that. Okay, so what do we got to do? Let's try clicking oh, that first. And then this. Maybe I just didn't click on it. Now they both look like they're highlighted. Nope, not working. So here's the thing that we can do now, is that we can just move those over, since there is some built-in tolerance. And you can see how they're not touching. Not touching over there. They're not touching over here. Things are going to be fine, don't worry. And we're going to use these blocks up here as the um, locations for the center, because you can see here the center. And we're going to just place it directly on that location. Now, if something doesn't look right, and this is the, the basically the advantage of using snaps, because that will snap right in place. If you have something that's not snapping properly into place, you just have to adjust the um, canvas origin to be where you want it to be. And it kind of snaps. See how it snaps? to that thing. So I'm going to actually snap it to that center. It, it seems like I need to move things down a little bit. But we're going to snap it to the center. Now everything else should snap to that. Now, if you're having even issues with that, here's a pro tip. Actually hit X. So I'm going to actually cut and not paste. But you can get like a super close. Sometimes it'll snap. Sometimes it won't. Just keep zooming in and then you sort of get the center as close as you can. Hit OK. It goes away. Oh, no. But when you paste, it will be directly where you placed that thing before. And you can see that I'm pretty much dead nuts within any sort of machine tolerance. So I'm going to back out of that because everything was good. OK, so I'm just going to go into tone. And you can see I'm kind of clashing right now with my circuit board. Um, okay, now we're here. Maybe that's okay. Because mainly what we're also looking for is you can do a check to see, like, Tata 3, P, do 3, uh, triple pull, double throw. Let's see if this shows up with anything. We're looking for like the board outline and you can absolutely check to see if the dimensions are what you're looking for. So ultimately I'm just looking to make sure there's clearance here to where we could put the uh, foot switch. Now I'm going to reuse my foot switch. Like basically I have a generic um, template for all my, um, for all my, builds. So I like to use the same enclosure for all my builds. Um, and because I know that they work and you can kind of build yourself a little um, in inventory or library like that. So at this point, I'm just going to copy some things over. Obviously, the in and out needs to be moved because they're clashing. It will see how there's like a little yellow mark here. So I'm just going to move those out of the way for now. 
Um, if you wanted to, you can do a sneak preview and hit 3D, and it will kind of show you all the components that have 3D libraries, but also it will show you your board and what the back would look like and what the front looks like um, and things like that. All right, sweet. Actually, I think this is the first time I've used um, that footprint where it gave me the capacitors and the uh, resistors as such. Okay, so again, oh, so I did notice that I didn't make the cut when it came to what value. So I'm just going to go tone. Maybe we'll do something like this at the bottom. I don't know. I'm just making it up as we go, of course. Just whatever you think is best. So now I have to look at my blues breaker, see. I, I, actually, I don't know what is what. Um... Oh, here we go. Gain, tone, and volume. So I need to think about it backwards. So my volume is actually on the left. So we'll go like this. Again, we'll do the snap thing. So see how it's like off? It doesn't give me that perfect sort of snap. I'm going to just take my Select that, hit X. Where does it want the center to be? And we're going to give it like super close to direct center. Can just eyeballing it. If you know of a better way, please do tell me in the comments below. But now it's much better as far as origin. Okay, we're going to obviously have to do the same over here. So we get there. X. Okay, now we're going to paste. So basically, I also have predetermined, because of my own experience, that there is enough room in this design to have normal, basically all those like enclosed switchcraft jacks that Tata sells, they fit in here very nicely on top of the pots. So you're sort of maximizing the amount of space potential. Okay, again, if we wanted to, I'll show you in a second. We take all these things, you kind of, oh, let's arrange them. I don't know which way it makes sense. Volume, tone, let's say drive, with the value on the right. And we'll go click, click, again, holding control. And we're going to line them all up horizontally and now they're all perfect perfectly aligned horizontally um okay so you can obviously see that we're starting to build a pedal so it's exciting and you know what i just remembered is I actually i like to have my ins and outs at the very bottom near the switch interesting right um because we're going to make this a triple pull double throw basically a true bypass so you're going to have that wire going in and out of the pedal or uh, itself like the enclosure from the top all the way down to the bottom and then just a short jumper into the in and out of the circuit board super super cool all right so let's start getting going on the power side so you can do this a few different ways um i like to dive into the power side of things first so the ground i don't think we need really need to call it ground in but we just call it ground in and then we have uh nine volt in it's kind of important and then the reason why i like to arrange it this way is because when I just from my building that I've done is I like to have the ground go up to a like kind of like a star ground on to the left. And the way I arrange these um, pots or not the pots, but the way I arrange these 
in these power jacks, the orientation is such that the 9 volt is an easy one in the center, and then on the leftmost side is the terminal for the ground. Okay, so I have my in, my out. Um, you sometimes do have to go back to your schematic to see, okay, what's next? But also, if you look here, the rat lines, these are called rat lines, um, you can turn them on and off, by the way. But the rat lines will kind of show you which direction and orientation. So like for the N1-4001, whoops. And by the way, after I get these locked in, these pots, I like to lock them. Lock. So they, because they're big and you can accidentally push them around, but I'm not going to do that. So you can see here that my 9 volt actually is easier to connect here and there. So I'm gonna, that's how I'm going to sort of leave it. And then it's always tempting, but they just kind of looks too crazy. So I'm just going to go on like kind of on top, maybe to the side. So it's just like 9 volt in, ground in sort of thing. And then of course we can make them line up perfectly because that's good practice. Okay, so we have everything pretty much started. Um, another tip is that you go to your design manager, and right now, like, I don't really want to see because it can get cluttered what the components that talk to ground because you see, like, it eliminates some rat lines. So I'm going to turn that off temporarily um, because if we're going to do a copper fill. And I'll show you how to do that later. Basically, you make the top and the bottom of the board with copper so it reduces noise, um, kind of acts like coax. We can do that. Um, I think next up is going to be some of these capacitors. So now comes kind of the fun part where you get creative um, with your designs. See how this ground could have been a weird in your way sort of connection. Whoops. Doing these so you wouldn't really like, ah, okay, I gotta connect my grounds. We're gonna go here. And you gotta kinda think about how deep. The one thing I don't like about this particular footprint is it doesn't have like a good positive and negative sort of thing. So what we're going to do is going to just have some text. You notice that it's red. It's because of the layer that it's on. So now I'm going to change it to top silk layer and we'll just put a plus sign. We'll change the font and see if there's a contract C looking font. Yep. And then we'll just make sure that that's the plus and we'll copy and paste that over here. Um, and then we can do negative on the other if you really wanted to, or we could just leave it like this. So as far as the circuit design, I wonder if I could group these together. Uh, maybe, what's this? Group, does that make these things a group? Don't know why, um, but you just have to just remember to move them around. So I wonder, you can see kind of right now that the tone pot is sort of messing with things. So I'm going to try to move these maybe on top of each other. And see if that, I mean, I like to have sort of like an aesthetics look to it. Um, actually, let's do it like this. Because the ground doesn't really need to be too crazy. So now we can put that one here. And then we have this one. 
we'll move together. And you can sort of eyeball it and see that those are out of the way. You know, we can have a run go from over here straight down. Um, but we do want to make sure that these components are at least together. Just want to move just that positive down. Yep. Just like that. So now they're aesthetically, let's see if they show up. Ah, no, there's no 3D footprint, but you can sort of see already that they're nicely spaced out. You can see what they're going to look like. Okay. You know what now I'm thinking of is like, do we have enough room or do I need to pull those board, this board down a little bit for these switches? Yeah, I might need to pull the board down slightly. Well, no, I think it's going to be tight, but it'll be all right. So you can sort of see the center of this right here, how it shows it's in red as the direct center that lines up really nicely. All right, let's just double check and make sure that we have clearance for that on the other side. This. Oh, it's not perfect. Okay, so we're going to have to do something here um, to find the center. So I'm going to X, X, paste it there. Okay, so that solved that problem. I'll just double check that that intersection, no, nope, see that one's off too a little bit. I think that really is because of the footprint of the Tata um, enclosure here is just a little off from the snaps. Okay, so now what I think is going to be the best course of action for at least the volume, oh, and I got to unlock it now, is to move that up, move this up, and then we'll just relock it. Maybe we have to. Okay, so actually I'll just make them, I'll wait until the end so we can have all of the names across the line. So unlock, we're going to unlock these temporarily. Drive, K. Maybe move these in so they're aesthetically kind of sort of out of the way. Okay. Oh, that didn't. Something don't work. Okay. As you can tell, this takes a very long time. All right. So now we're just going to one, two. Whoops. It can be a little frustrating. Right click, lock. Okay. So now that's kind of what we're going with at the moment. And these switches are the mod switches, by the way. And let me double check, because we have, I've already made a thing. So we want the capacitors on the left and the resistors on the right. So switch one, single pull double throw is the capacitors. So what did I say the capacitor is on? The left. So actually I have to swap these around. Ah. I guess no big deal. Well, actually, let me double check because I think it's important to see 
Well, it looks like I have connections on both sides. So making it basically easier for me to connect things. So the 100K and then that need to talk to each other. I'll just do it the way that the uh, artwork is already. All right, so now we got those switches reversed. And we can kind of keep working our way um, just now with the main circuit. So I do like having the LED kind of standardized with all of my stuff. But I do know that I did make an error on the TSV 808. So let me go into all projects. Um, I think Klon, I did it the right way. Oh, come on. That's not what I wanted. But I did do that one too. How fun. Come on. I want values of the tone geek. It's not one for one then, is it? Oh, because I want this one values. Are you serious? It's not a oh, because I gotta do one twenty five B. Must have been doing something else. So I'm actually going to cut the reference point is going to be here. So when I add the LED into here, we know where about I am. And let's see. So it's a little higher. Okay, so now we're just going to temporarily flip it so it's the same orientation, put it over the top. We're very, very close to. And then select the old one. What does that old one look like? Yeah. Just the basic plus and minus. I do not want to save. All right, now we're good to go. So now we know the location of where I'd like to put my, um, the end here. Or the LED. Sorry, I'm like kind of fading here. All right, um... Continue on. The in is connected to this, which is also connected to this 10F. Okay. So now I'm going to try to get all these things together. I like to put this like right in the center if I can because it just looks good there. So what's next? One end. Is this what's next? Nope. I think it might have been just traversing. Yep. To tell me that we need to get this 
1M. Again, I'm just trying to get an idea of what this layout should look like. I could copy the layout from Pedal PCB if I wanted to. Let's just see Blues Breaker. But I don't really want to do that. But you can see sort of what they went with, which is all the capacitors on the outside and all the resistors on the inside. You can do 100% copy of that if you want. I'm not going to do that. But maybe I will. I don't know. Maybe I'll do the resistors on the outside. Yeah. And then the capacitors on the inside. Oh, I think I broke my own rule. All right, let's go one at a time. So we went here. We have this. That. that. This actually does connect. So maybe we do need this. And you can see, like, the orientation. So it's kind of snapping to these things. So let's do that. Let's grab this. And then these are kind of needed. So let's find a place for that. What I like to do is have all my diodes on the whole board all face the same way if I can. So, and then just use the circuit board um, connections to make the connections for us. That one looks good there. Should be one more somewhere. Oh, there it is. All right, so grab this. Where does it want to go? Maybe. Eh, whatever. So what we can do is take all of these to two and then space them out. They're not spacing out or maybe they did and I missed it. Oh, I must have did something. Okay. One, two, three, four. Center. Okay, there it goes. And then we space them out evenly. That's a huge sort of button to use. And then now we can group them and place them, you know, wherever we need to. I think what's kind of annoying, and I, we might just can get rid of it at this point, is the Tata thing. Let's get rid of that because now I can fully select and move things around like such. And actually, if I wanted to, let's go back to this. We'll hide it. I'll show you how to hide things, but we can go to document, unhide, basically hide it. And then now it won't be a thing, I don't think. Nope, it's still there, annoying us. So we're just going to get rid of it. All right, maybe we can throw this like directly in the center because that could look pretty cool and intimidating. Again, we're just having fun. Trying to lay these all out. Okay. So that's just, I guess, there's not many components in here. So that's kind of the cool thing about this particular circuit. Um, it looks like there's connections into here. So let's kind of keep them grouped together. Looks like these things kind of need to be over on this side. So we'll do that. How about this one? Where does this one go? Okay, that one likes to talk to things over there. So that's cool.
All right, now these are a little different. These could be, um, what's that called? These could be silver micas. I think that's a great use of silver micas in the circuit. It would be in the Pico Farad, kind of what I've learned from the Vemoram stuff. Same with the 47 here. So we're going to try to make those. Oh, yeah, that, that could look super cool. One on each side. Oh, by the way, we do want to lock these switches down. So let's lock those. And I think I should be able to center. Oh, it's not letting me. If, if the component's, like, locked, it doesn't really seem to play nice by anchoring, you know what I mean? Like, I just want to anchor it. Okay. Um, what else we got? So, SW and SW ground, those are actually our LEDs stuff. If you want, you can also hit the space bar and that kind of rotates these. I try to avoid that if I can, but sometimes it just makes sense. Like maybe we should do that over here. Um, I don't know if I love that. Kind of feels a little bit out of place. Because we can also space these out. Like, we have so much room. And I actually might go back. I think my... um, What's that thing called? My VS10 is a little smaller. So I might go back and select the VS10. Size board. This out. Hit that, this, this, that. Let's go with centered. And then you can also use your keyboard. What is it used to? Let's select all of these. We'll do like a spaced out like that. So now it's all nice, nice. Um, click, 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 click. Keyboard down. Looks good. This one, I want to center that with the hole. So we're going to... Sometimes you need to click it aggressively a bunch. Nope, not letting me. It's not letting me. So there. There. Oh, come on. I don't, I don't understand. So we're going to move it over by hand. Okay. So we have that. Do, do, do. Let's keep going. So we're going to try to do the resistors on the outside to be a little different. This one looks like it would be happier over here. And you can rotate these just fine. It's probably the best idea. And then this one is the LED. So I like to actually have that close to the LED, if not right near it. So we'll do something like that. Yeah. 
This one should be Again, we're trying to maximize our or minimize our spacing between things. Okay, maybe I have to rotate or swap some of these out. So like this one, this over here. Sister. Okay. Oops, it needs to be on the outside, remember. Okay, so that one's good. I don't know what I did over here. I guess we're gonna have to live with some consequences. Okay, so we want to try to do the capacitors on the inside, remember. So capacitor, 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 these are all resistors, capacitor, capacitor. Again, are you are you amazed on how much trial and error this is? It takes a very long time. So over there, let's click here, click there, click here, just to kind of give us some organized, whoops, not that way. I don't know what the hell just happened. Oh, that was new. I've never seen that before. Okay, so there, there, this. So let's put these all vertically in a row. Thank you. Same with this. Let's find some normal C. Maybe we'll just space them out just for now. So here, here, and here. Like that. And then we'll also do one of these. Okay, just a few more resistors. Just kidding. A lot more resistors. So this one feels like it would be best suited over here. Man, everything is on this side. Hopefully we can get away with some on the other side. Nope, doesn't look like it. Hey, I guess we're going over here. This guy high up here. Okay. Gosh darn, another one on that side. And also another hint is if we give ourselves um, or the auto auto router space to route things off the side, that's very beneficial. Um, but it's okay because I think we're going to space things out enough to where there will be plenty for that router to do.
And I'm not too worried in this low voltage circuit about crosstalk or anything like that. Um, I mean, everything's relatively close, so nothing too crazy there. Let's see if there's anything that I can maybe shift over. There's lots of opportunities here. So we have one, two, three, four capacitors. One, two. Is there any? Oh, what's out over here? Oh, gosh darn. It's another resistor. There's nothing over here that can be used. Okay, so... All right, let's pull this one down. That'll be at the top. Put something like there. So now we're going to expand basically as far up and as far down as we want to go. So we got this, that one, this one, that one. And then we're going to sort of do a center. And then we're going to do a distribute evenly distribute um i guess we're going to do the same let's include this capacitor okay yep well i guess you know what because we have so much room let's put this capacitor it can be with the other capacitors maybe Yeah, that could be cool looking. I would just need to kind of do something like this. Or you know what would be wild? Is to have these vertical. Heck yeah. Let's do that. Let's have these vertical because they're weird. And then I can sort of get them to be center centered up later ah oh, man i just ruined their alignment okay all right let's get these capacitors all in a row awesome maybe we can align it with that yeah let's do that okay so that's looking a lot better what does happen what happens if i do distribute okay that looks good um what I want to do with here, it's a little bit of a of a game. So let's see if I can distribute something that looks normal. All right, so now let's go that, this one, make them align. Same with these. horizontal alignment and I'm just, basically what I'm trying to do is get them to be all horizontally aligned or at least some of them and I'll just redistribute these If I just gently move this, it will tell me, you know, how far off I am with the other one on the left-hand side. That's where I'm looking. So that one's good. It's over one. And this. Perfect. Okay. So... Basically, there's one missing capacitor here. Uh, I'm going to move these around. So I do have to redistribute now because I'm a jerk. But you see that I'm shortening these lines over here. Let's see if I can be non-destructive. Okay, there you go. All right, so I think... <laughs> that looks semi-decent. Let's see from a 3D board how this looks. Okay, that looks pretty sexy. I cannot lie. Um, 
I kind of want to move that around, but maybe not. Okay, so what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to... Maybe I'll redistribute these a little bit. Just to kind of give the router a place to breathe between them. And I'll make sure that they're centered with this guy. So everything is centered. Okay, so let's take a 3D look at what this board looks like. And I think that it looks freaking great. It looks awesome. Although, I'm not crazy about what's going on over here. It's nothing really functional. I mean, honestly, if we were going for something super functional, we should have probably... I could have probably done a little bit more, but... Um, oh, I just noticed that all of these are all whack. Let's do something about that. So I want to do a vertical distribution and then a vertical center. Okay, that looks a lot better. But actually what I really want to do is let's get this in line with that top one. Let's see if I can align this with something else like, like that one. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll do it like that. And then we'll do a, whoops, yeah, distribution. And we'll do a quick vertical. All right, so now let's get a new 3D view. Oh yeah, that's cool. Um, all right, so if you want in this, you can also change the color. So black, of course, black. It's absolutely what you need to do is change it to be, to be black. Okay. Um, this looks great. You can also see the back side of the board. We can add something fun. So if you wanted to add at this point, maybe we'll wait until the end, but you can do some text. Um, not so much a plus sign, but let's do top silk layer. And you can say like, for me, it'd be the tone geek or whatever, um, or what version this is. You know, whatever. And then you can see how that looks here. Now, I'm not going to go over just because it's kind of in depth. Um, you can import pictures and things like that. It's okay. I have to use a uh, GitHub thing called SVG import. This is, seems to be like the cleanest way of making SVGs uh, that you use, that you make in um, uh, Inkscape. So, Ink. Escape, draw freely. So definitely check out this. So basically it's kind of like Adobe Illustrator. You draw something and then you make an SVG and then you import that into your file here. And that's how you get a cool looking picture. Um, I'm just gonna go V1 over here, just like that. Okay, so now we need to route these things. Now there's the traditional way and the way that everyone will tell you that you need to learn and how it, it works and blah 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 and that's using an actual the PCB tools over here on the left you gotta make a track so the in will connect to that and then you, you just literally keep on connecting all the dots and you see how the blue lines go away after I make these routes like that um, and then it just tells you what's remaining so you do this and that's cool, but what I like to do also is make sure that the routes that I'm using, so I'm going to just backtrack a few, um, the lines are a little bit thicker, because why not? You reduce a little bit of capacitance that way, um, and plus your tracks are going to be a little bit beefier for rework, so if you have to change any of these components, they're going to be a little bit more resilient. Uh, so you change it here, uh, even go as crazy as two if you want. You can, as long as you can get away with it. Now, some people may ask what the minimum is. I mean, like literally you could probably 
be just fine with this. I know that if you look at Pebble PCB and the way that they do their uh, stuff, let's see here. You see that their tracks are super small. And you know what? That works, especially when they route these things because it looks really nice and pretty, right? And when they route it, it looks great. Um, but it also those tracks, you can kind of sort of see in here, those tracks can fit in between components if they need to. Uh, this layout looks pretty expertly done. So uh, we can all admire that together at a later time. But for now, I like to, you know, at least go one millimeter if I can. And then if you select the next track, it should be one millimeter again. So you can kind of see the, the distance that you can go. Um, and you can see like where your limitations are. So I'm going to go like this, take it down, up and around. And then also you can see like how close you're getting. This is getting into the design rule. So if you go to design, the design rule. So now you can say like what your clearances are and the, your diameters of things, but you also want your minimum track length. Um, you want, this is basically how to safeguard yourself um, and find errors. Cause if you do a DRC check, which is a design rule check, you're going to come out with all these sorts of errors. Um, it's going to tell you what's, what's basically wrong. What, what have you done? That's not good. So like these are missing pads, obviously, and you can go on and on and on and on. So that's the ultimate goal is you want to eliminate all the DRCs. So let's actually take a step back. I want to, I'm just hitting escape a few times so I can select oops, these things and just delete them for now. We want to make a ground plane for everything to connect to at the top of the bottom. And the way to do that is we make a copper area. So we want to make a ground copper area. And then it's not really super sexy or clean, but you can kind of make a box like that. And then you want to duplicate that box and then just offset it slightly. Where is it? So you can see it. And now we're going to assign that box to the bottom layer. And when we do that, now we have a, if we remove the top layer or hide it, then we see the bottom layer is full of copper. Okay. So I just want to make sure I'm recording still. So now we have the copper layer. Um, it's going to connect everything that's ground. So you see like this is ground. It's already connected to it. And then these have holes around it because they're not connected to that at all. They're, they're, that's your solder mask. All right. So now what we're going to do is save a lot of time. I like to use the auto, auto router, but it's really important that you set up your default appropriately. And it's always good to go big. Um, so I like to go with the, that and I like to double this. So we got 1.25. Let's go with like 0.25 clearance. If you really want to get scientific with this, um, you are basically have to look up what your voltages are and your clearance is dictated by the voltage and everything like that. And your track width is, you know, how much current is running here. So it's a little bit of a guessing game, but these pedals, like this pedal, I think draws maybe 10 milliamps. Um, so, you know, the track width doesn't really need to be as thick as I'm making it. And you could see here, oh, I should have gone over what that results were. Accidentally, I clicked auto route, just kind of on my own. So I'm going to unroute all, go to auto route again, and you can do a local install auto router, but the cloud one seems to be pretty efficient. You just have to wait for it to detect that you do not have a local one. But if you have the opportunity, it is a lot faster. And sometimes when the servers are busy, you get that extra sort of confidence that you can run it right away without having to wait for someone else's um, thing to stop. One thing I did forget is that you can 
remove like you don't need the ground to um like basically make a network of grounds because we made the big huge ground pores which acts as you know a good way to quiet your whole system down so because i eliminated the ground port or the grounds from the connections you can see here that it still wants to do it that because that is trying to reach over here and stuff like that um you can see the statistics here is total vias our goal is to reduce the amount of vias ideally down to zero so that's either through um you know rearranging some of the components so they could be better and closer aligned to where they need to go um or we just need to kind of as a human look at the routes that were made like in this case there's 12 watch what happens once it builds the copper area um okay so now this is an actual issue so if something is not connecting between these two paths it means legitimately it's not connecting although i'm confused here because it seems like this ground will connect to that this ground maybe it's this ground over here that's having a hard time um so what i'm gonna do is just to kind of show you what i'm up to well that goes to that ground and that ground goes to this ground so i don't know what the problem is oh maybe it's over here but that's connected to that ground Normally, you could see, like, if there's no ground, it, it makes these islands. So I don't know what is going on there. But let's just see over here, the DRC errors, rerun that check. And it seems like there's one. Incomplete ground, Where which pad? Okay, so that ground, talking with this component... Oh, okay, I see, because it's actually on an island. So you have this ground here. This ground plane doesn't connect any. It doesn't go anywhere. Um, I feel like that should be a hole. Okay, so that ground. So that's not good. Um, but what we can look at is we're moving these fills and we can also do a couple different styles you can do a 45 degree if you wanted to save on some copper um, some weight is reduced by doing it like that you can do it 90 degrees it's still going to be ground no matter what it's just you know stuff okay so here's sort of the cleanup and the unsexy part about using auto routers is that you know Sometimes you can get away and, and make some logical choices for the auto router. Um, sometimes you can't. Like, this is a seems to be a pretty complicated thing. And all vias aren't bad. Like, we're going to do our best to rearrange things, to remove as many vias as we can. Obviously, the goal is to be zero. And if you look at, like, this circuit board, there I don't detect any vias that were made. So he's done a, an amazing, or he or she done an amazing job laying out um, the circuit board. So that means on the other side, I'm sure you're going to see connections as well, but normally you would see like these little pinholes and I'll show you what that looks like in the 3d view. Um, you can see the, these little tiny holes and that is making the vias and we can increase the size of those vias. Um, that will make it a better, stronger connection. Oh, one thing I want to try actually. Let's go back to fill style solid. So now it's going to actually make some connections. Again, this is the one that we want to try to fix. Uh, if we do improve fabrication, yes. Um, how do we do it? Add remove vias. I think we got to just add remove vias on the top layer. And it will tell you like what kind of via diameter, column, spacing, and stuff like that. Basically, what this is doing is it's okay. And look, and it fixed the copper area. But what this is doing is actually adding those vias that I was talking about to the copper layers to reduce the um, basically 
the top of the bottom copper layer could create like a capacitance or basically act like an antenna and introduce noise. So what this add and remove vias is doing is that it's actually physically combining the top and the bottom layers together using those vias. Now, if I close, if I just hide the top layer, you can see that the bottom layer of copper is connected to the top layer of copper a lot of times. And, and that just makes a very stable electrical uh, connection between the top and the bottom. It's just basically you keep on adding um, holes, <laughs> basically, I don't know, connections between the two. So it's very stable. And it also will reintroduce um, and increase your chance of fixing those vias, those, uh, not vias, those um, fading here. Those ground connections that were not auto routed. So this is not bad. I'm not too crazy about the uh, amount of vias. So what we're going to do actually is we're going to go over here. We're going to, um, let's see, remove vias. Let's see, remove. Yeah, rebuild the copper area. And then we're going to, hide the fill to no fill and we're going to change the design rule a little bit because i think we're being a little aggressive with one millimeter whoops what the heck did i do oh design rule okay so i'm going to actually go with 0.5 and basically what the kind of the overall standard rule of thumb is that you want your clearance to be half the size of your track width. Um, but what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add another rule, and I'm just going to call it power. And this basically is going to have a separate, um, and I know I'm breaking that rule. Right. Let's just try it, 0.5. I'm going to have a separate rule, and I... It must confirm the edit. Okay, God. Let's apply. How do I? Oh, I see what. Because it wants me to type it in. All right, let's just for fun. 305. Normally that these defaults are actually the bare minimum uh, capabilities of JLC PCB. So easy EDA is from what I can tell very much, uh, in bed with JLC PCB and their design rules out of the box are capable of basically the lowest capable, um, or the lowest, you know, smallest diameter, smallest track width, whatever, according to the, uh, fabrication rules of JLC PCB. So let's just try that for now. I'm gonna go over here to my nine volt and I'm gonna select power. So my nine volt line is gonna actually have these rules while everything else is gonna have the default. So now I need to go and try to find, okay, VREF is the other one that I wanna to switch to power. Okay, and I'm gonna hit okay for the settings. Auto route, let's just wait for it to unavailable all layers if you had a four layer board you could select which layer to do the auto routing on because like for my tsv 808 and my uh january clone what i did was i had the top of the i had four layer board top of the bottom layers were copper pour while the inner layers were um the signal so it created like this cool network of mini coax style things Okay, so total vias now are 14, so we reduced them. It's still not great. Not really too happy about it, to be honest. But check this out. So after all those runs were made, um, the power was stayed pretty beefy. And normally you do want the power to have a little extra um, size to it. So what I'm also going to do... Is that I'm sure that that via is fine. I want to beef up these vias a bit because if this is sort of the aesthetic that we want to go with, um, again, like this low voltage circuit, I could 
spend a little bit more time, I'm sure, and arrange some of these components, which I might off camera. Um, plus, you'll be able to see. Oh, don't forget to save often, by the way. But the goal is, oh, I don't know why it's 9VN. What's, why is that skinny? What's the track here? Net D5. All right, so let's look up net D5 or change that in the auto route. Uh, sorry, in the design rule. D5. D5 power setting. Oh, shoot. I don't think I designed it. Where are we at? D5. Power apply setting. All right, now let's do auto route. We gotta wait for it to say, hey, there's nothing available. And run. Okay, so now, oh, actually we reduced vias that way. So again, there's sometimes this program does make bad decisions. I don't think I see any off the top of my head, but I know that I've built circuits in the past, um, circuit boards that have produced basically very obvious things that I could just simply, you know, for example, I could do that here because I could take that, what it made a decision was the bottom layer and I could just simply go over here, make that a top layer and guess what? No difference, but everything, you know, now it's on the top layer and I could shuffle things around and that would make things a little bit better. Um, let's see if there's something I can do for reducing these vias. I, I'm kind of, that was kind of crazy to see it reduce the vias like it did. Um, let's do some rules changes like for this, maybe we'll have to go to via diameter one, and then this will be 0.5. Let's see what that looks like. We should see a difference. But you can see like how quickly, you know, obviously like I'm trying to teach and everything at all on the fly, but you can see how quickly you can make circuit boards uh, from designs this way. And you can see that this via right here is a little bit bigger than this via over here, just because of the design rule change that we've made. Um, and it's, you know, of course, adhering to all the other stuff. So let's go over here. Let's fill this in. Uh, make sure we don't forget to add a solid uh, fill. And then we'll just select one of the, I have to choose the top, add remove vias. We'll do add. Sure, the basic, all those things are good. That. And let's see what happens when we refresh our DRC errors. All right, we got nothing, no errors, which means that we this is a um, electrically sound circuit board and it's ready for fabrication. And if we populated it, it would pretty much guarantee that it's working. Now, it may be noisy or it may have other sort of crosstalk characteristics uh, because of the layout, but we know that you know, at least electrically, everything's connected together. And that's the benefit of doing the schematic first versus jumping straight into uh, a layout where you're sort of guessing, okay, this component goes here, that goes, we can think about like a tag board thing. Um, one thing to kind of look out for is any sort of silk screen that overlaps with vias, because you won't be able to see that component very easily uh, because it's going to, let's see, I'll sh see if I can show you. <clears throat> um, to, oh, well, you can't even see it because it's under the component, but the silk screen basically, oh no, we can't see it. Watch if I do invisible, like the component would be, uh, or that silk screen would be over that hole. And then you would see half the thing kind of like over here where you see the silk screen is, is omitted around there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is again, another refinement that I'm going to go with is I'm going to change my design rule. So the, the vias for 
the um, default, I think I'm going to change. Uh, so I'm going to do the same 1 and 0.5 just to make them a little bit bigger. Uh, and the main reason for that is, oh shoot, did I just change uh, because I hit apply design? That rule power, power, and then power. Okay, so those are all okay. All right, auto route. Because I, I kind of want the via, the hole, basically it's a, it's all the way through. There's a electrical connection all the way through. I want those to kind of simulate the overall diameter of a component lead inside. So the bigger the via, the more um, surface area, the more electrical conductivity between the two layers. So let's see what happens when I increase the size. Oh my gosh, 40, 57 vias? Oh, because I think it's counting the others. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's see what happens. So we're going to just remove the vias for now. Yeah, let's do that. That got me before, so I'm glad I can save you the the uh, heart attack. Oh my gosh, we're down to six, six vias. I don't know how. Like this is pretty much magic. I don't know how on camera, <laughs> more or less. I'm able to reduce the vias by increasing the size of things. It just kind of blows my mind. Um, okay, so let's see what happens. You can see like there's a couple fill areas and we'll go into our design manager again and just check. Okay, so we don't need to do those vias technically, but we are um, for the improved fabrication because everything's connected. Check that out. The DRCs, everything's connected the way that it did its auto routing magic. Um, so what I do just as another tip for troubleshooting, because everything is now doesn't have a prefix, I will just basically, uh, where is it? I'll go to no, no solid and I'll take a picture of this. If you want, you can change the background to white, so it's a little bit somewhat easier to see, um, or just any other color that might be, no, that's awful. Or it's gonna stick with black. Black seems to be pretty good contrast, um, but you can kind of see where I'm going there. It's like now I can see, okay, well, it's a little bit extra work, but you know, tracing, <laughs> You know, this component is connected to this component over here, and then you can kind of guess which 10 NF that is, I suppose. Uh, and also, that's pretty funny that I got all these 10 NFs in a row. It makes me kind of tempted to bring that one over. Interesting. Um, nah, I'll just leave it. But isn't that kind of interesting? I can see like the the wire for this one does go pretty far. Um, again, we'll have to just build it and see how it sounds. But I think I'm pretty confident in this design. Just kind of like a one last thing. I want to see if I can increase the track width just a little bit. Let's see if we get the same. Uh, I forgot how many vias did we get? I'll have to check the video. It's auto route. Actually, let's just see what we got. All right, so it's gonna unroute, and now it's gonna auto route, and now we're down to six. Holy smokes. Okay, let's go to auto route. Design rule. Let's see if I can go. Let's do little increments like that. 0. 0.6. Setting. 
at some point it's probably going to tip the other way. Okay, so now we can get away with 0.6. Good. I feel better about that. So as long as we're staying low, like I can deal with six. I think six is an okay number. All right, so now we're at 0.7, we're still at six. All right, now let's go to, all right, let's try it, 0.8. I might have to increase my via diameter. Ah, uh, okay, I gained one or two, two vias. Okay, but you can see, see how the vias are basically the, co the sorry, electrical connections over here pretty much match. That's what I was sort of going where you either want to match or go bigger than the um, track width was sort of what I'm going with. So I think I'm going to back down. I think I'm going to do it. I'm just going to back down one. Or sometimes you get lucky, honestly, if you reroute and it, I don't know, the, does it, the sun is positioned in such a way that you could lose a, a via, like, which is kind of cool. Um, but it doesn't look like that day is today for us. So I'm going to Again, go to auto route, design rule. Let's back this down to seven, and hopefully we get back down to six vias. Okay, six vias. Just because I'm dumb and I'm going to push it. Auto route, let's see, 0.75. Let's see. 0.75, ah, uh, 8. So that's where the tipping point is. I don't really want to um, decrease the clearance at all, because obviously that would be a tactic. Um, I just don't feel like that would be a good move. All right, let's just make sure nothing is so yeah see i like the via diameter be a little bit bigger or equal to the track width but you know bigger is definitely better that looks good um okay again we're really close to the end here um all right i'm just gonna do a copper well copper fill i'm gonna add uh Remove vias. So I want to add these are the vias to make the ground incredibly consistent. <laughs> and you can actually feel the circuit board like is cold. And because this is a trick that um you know professional circuit board people do uh with those vias like that to actually conduct the heat away from the layers or components on the top will conduct the heat using those vias down to the bottom layer, which is kind of cool. All right, so I think this is good. I think this is great, actually. So what's next? We have a circuit board. Let's just take another 3D picture. I saved it, obviously. 3D image. Let's make sure everything looks good. Board color, let's go black because black always visible. Um, you know, maybe I can s s get that 220K over 220 NF. That looks kind of shady. Oh man, how cool would that be if we had all 10 Fs, NFs over there? But I feel like that's not going to work out well. Um, I don't know. This looks so good. The way it is, let's just just kind of keep it. But you know what? I might refine it off camera just to, you know, like the 220, moving that over and whatever. 
All right, so you want to know what to do next, right? So the next thing to do is generate Gerber file. So the Gerber file is the thing that you need to do after save. Gerber file is the thing that you upload. Um, oh, come on. It wasn't done yet. It's going to make you check DRC again. And please make sure you do this because you just never know. Oh, no. DRC errors. Why? Need more than... Oh, okay. So here's... Here's the thing. The diameter of those extra vias is smaller than the rule. Okay? So we are going to go back to the rule. And here's our rules. And it's like, oh no, like, what the heck, man? Add remove vias. And guess what? Look, over here, drill diameter and the diameters. Those are actually smaller than um, the DRC. So we do need to add these somewhere in the DRC to say, hey, this is OK. So design rule, the default, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to do, see if uh, default, see if I can add one for GND. And I'm just going to say point. I mean, I don't think the track width matters. 0.25. What was it? 305.305 and then point. Maybe that was 0 0.305 and then this is 0 0.61. I think that was it. Setting. All right. I don't know. Let's see here. 305 and 0.61. Okay, diameter 0.61. Okay. Let's see if that fixes our DRCs. Need more than DRC. Uh, Okay, maybe we need to find... Okay, GND. Okay, oh, that's why. So we need to... Okay. Let's try this. Yes! Okay, zero. See what I did there? Uh, if you don't... Didn't see it, re just rewind it. <laughs> and by the way, when you populate all those things, this is kind of what the final product's going to look like. Um, you can see like the holes, uh, you know, the islands and, or sorry, not islands, but the voids here and the copper will be a little bit shinier than the voids with the solder mask. Okay. Again, we want to generate the Gerber file. Please save. Ah, crap. Generate Gerber file. Yes, we want to check DRC. All good. This is the screen you want to see. And this is where I say like, um, you get the crazy deals from JLC PCB. So they kind of want you to go that direction, which I do highly recommend actually. So, you know, I might go with 50 and you can see how much it costs. It's like $10 for 50 of these circuit boards. It's incredible. Um, and then obviously we want to go black because yes. Um, and there's a whole SMT service mount technology. They'll populate the boards for you and stuff like that. But that's a whole nother video. Right now, we just want to do the through hole, like something that everyone's kind of used as a baseline when it comes to building pedals um, is the through hole. So um, let's see, learn more or is this how you order? Okay, special offer, blah, 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 once a month. Yes, they do throw some amazing coupons your way. Absolutely. And so at the very end, you can um, use it. Sometimes you could see like four layer circuit boards aren't that much more than two layer circuit boards. So I may try to figure out how to add two more layers after. But okay, let's generate the Gerber file. So this is basically generated the Gerber file. It saved it. Cool. I think there's a way to one touch order. Let's see. 
Okay, yeah, that's fine. Generate Gerber files, do that again. One, all right, generate, one click order PCV. Okay, maybe we do want to do this. Just generate it. Click OK to continue. It's going to sign into JLC PCB. So if you don't already have a username and password, um, that's where you do that. I'm not a robot. So it's going to go ahead and if all goes well, sometimes it doesn't. It won't add the Gerber for me. I have to like kind of go back. So here's another thing that you might come across is like, it may not because of the login may not work exactly as you thought. So you have to kind of already be logged in and now it will do the upload. So close the other window because you don't want that. So there is a basically a preview image, but right now it's going to tell you all the things about your circuit board. Um, so how many, you know, quantity I wanted. So PCB thickness, you're going to get slammed with um, fees. And I like to do my circuit board, um, the, the, basically the tops of my circuit board, or not circuit boards, the enclosures, basically like the, uh, close this out. My project, my face plates, that's what I was going for. My face plates I like to do at point eight. But for all my circuit boards, I like to use point six. That's usually how you get them the quickest as well. So what else can I tell you? Um, don't worry about this stuff. That's like pretty extra, whatever. Uh, you can do, do your PCB quantity and you can see all the numbers change on how much is pretty crazy. Because if you go from 50 to let's say 100, Let's do that in the end because we do not want PCB assembly. You'll see that price go from 27 to 18. So we want to go um, here. Uh, well, yeah, they're giving me it. Basically, the boards are nine dollars and ten cents. Let's go to a hundred. The boards are 1820. So you double it eh, for about double the price. I don't know why this engineering fee is there. I think that should go away because I don't have PCB assembly. Um, I'm going to go back to 50. I don't know why it's got engineering fee. Okay, let's delete this. And if you have a file, you can, my file, upload Gerber file and add a Gerber file. And I'm going to find my internet downloads. Here's the Gerber file. So let's see if we can get rid of that $8 engineering fee by just manually uploading the Gerber file. Boom. We got rid of the engineering fee. Hopefully let's go to 50. Oh, okay. So the engineering fee comes in with how many I order. Got it. So we want black. I want black. This, that, the other thing. Via covering. You don't really, you can read through all of it, see what you want. You can have them plugged. Um, yeah. Some people like to have the vias. Um, untented so then you can solder and fill those via holes so it's basically making a really stupid awesome connection um i don't do that i just leave basically everything the same oh one thing i forgot to tell you is that you can specify a location and basically what you need to do um and i highly recommend just completely removing the the order number completely on uh, and it's only a dollar to remove it, but definitely on face plates, you want to remove that. But if you want to save a dollar, basically what you do is you go to your circuit board and then on the back, so you have this thing right here, do um, top layer, bottom silk layer, top, bottom silk layer. 
and then just you got to type in JLC, 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 JLC. You got to do that four times and then just place it somewhere. So when you are looking at your circuit board on the back, that's the placement of where their engineers are going to put the order number of your circuit board. So there's that. Um, but, you know, for a dollar, I just have them remove it. Whatever, and not have to chance it. You can, if you want, go with Enig. That's that's gold. So if you are super confident in your design, I don't recommend this for for um, you know basic designs and prototypes. But if you wanted to do like a small run, just to make sure your design is good, Enig is amazing um, for surface mount. So Enig is great for surface mount because it creates like a soft um, a flat finish where the HASL with lead, um, that has a little bit of a different surface. So the soft surface mount components do not kind of lay flat, or it is more of a chance of something going wrong. Um, I like to use that because it's great or use with the HASL because it's good for rework on your circuit board too. Um, the Enig is a little bit more fragile for rework. So if you have to remove a component or whatever, uh, or if you have a customer, if you're building these for your um, customer client based, um, that you know amateurs might or just people starting out might need to remove components, that could be frustrating for them if they are using a more fragile um, technique or basically a uh, coating. But the Enig is in theory because it's gold; those are that's a better conductor than the HASL. So there's benefits to that as well. It's, just, it's kind of a better conductor. Um, some people like to get crazy with colors. I'm trying to think what else to talk about here. So there is advanced options. Um, if you are making a, you might find this out like I did. If you're making face plates and you want the face plates to not basically be scratched up like during shipment and whatever, they will um, add paper between the circuit boards so they're not rubbing during transit um appearance quality let's see what this does okay so appearance quality i think sometimes it's worth it going with appearance quality only because i've got a run of face plates before and each and every single one of them had like these oil deposits and scratched surface which is okay for like the main circuit board um because you know structurally it's good but aesthetically it it came out like crap um i think i would have spent more i think i did spend more money reordering circuit boards and just hoping that the face plates looked good so that's one area that um, I kind of recommend if you're especially being serious about it, going with superb quality. That way you don't have to mess and reorder um, things, especially if you're not getting like UV printed enclosures. This is really expensive. This high definition exposure silkscreen, watch the price. Here we go, $107, heck no. And by the way, the inkjet screen printing, that looks amazing. That's what I've been going with the whole time. Um, I don't know why people want a blank box, but you know that's an option too. If you're in the US, one thing to know is that, um, well, besides the price of shipping can go up pretty drastically, is if your order goes over uh, or close to over $500, definitely over $800, but you will be, um, adhered to the import tax laws so you're going to pay 25 percent on top of that from for importing into from china so that's just something uh for my american friends so all you have to do is save the cart at this point and you you know go through the checkout process and there you have your very own circuit boards so i hope you enjoyed this my next video will be me um basically populating this board and building it so i hope you stick around and enjoy this if you liked it give it a thumbs up subscribe um tell me what i can do better next time i know this was kind of very long video most of mine are sometimes so i'm hoping that you found it useful 
and I hope you have a great day.